Hi everyone, it's Gabby, and today I'm going to be doing my anticipated summer releases. I know it's late, it's June 22nd when I'm filming this, but I took a hiatus from YouTube. Um, not because of anything that anybody did or anything like that, just because I had summer school, like summer classes for college um, that I was doing and things like that and I had a lot of like schoolwork on my plate um, and like finals so I just kind of took a break and, and didn't do anything in addition to that um, with COVID even though I said this a lot in my videos before um, my mom is working from home my dad's working from home my dad my brother had school from home so it was just a lot of people in the same area that I film and stuff so I just kind of said I'm gonna take a break until I can be calm and not feel so overwhelmed with everything that I'm doing so it's summer summer for me um, now so I am planning on posting every Monday Wednesday and Friday as frequently as I can really within that time frame and it might slow down when I go back to school but for right now up until the end of August from now to the end of August this is uh, that's kind of kind of be my posting schedule that's what I'm aiming for so today I'm going to be talking about my most anticipated releases I am going to be including June releases um, because I still think that it's summer to me summer is June July and August so I'm just gonna include that else however before we get into the video I just wanted to take a minute and talk about kind of recent events so as we know the Black Lives Matter movement and the death of George Floyd has been all over the news, all over the world. Grant, granted, this isn't a problem that came up because of his death. However, it has been propelled into becoming a movement that is being uh, recognized more in, on the news again. So, as I am not a black creator, I wouldn't know. Obviously, I'm white privileged. Um, even though I'm Hispanic, I'm still white privileged. I don't know what it's like. Um, I did want to, down below, I'm going to link this playlist of black creators that um, Mayana and Mayana Reads um, did. Like, she created a playlist. Um, because I think it's really important that in this time where black people feel like their lives don't matter and everybody else is kind of some people are kind of going along with that. I think it's really important that we support black creators and just black people everywhere in the community. So this is my part. I'm also going to link down some petitions um, for us to sign, um, things like that, and some resources to kind of educate yourself and maybe others if you want to share them. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to be doing um, down below. For all of my videos, I'm going to have them linked down below because maybe you don't see this video but you see another one and I want to make sure that it, we get it out there. I mean, I'm not a big uh, YouTuber at all, like by any means, even booktube means I have 65 subscribers right now. Most of them are my family. Thank you family for subscribing. Um, but if by the off chance that, you know, you're not my family member or you find this video and you haven't seen it from anybody else, I just want to make sure that it's out there um, and make sure that number one is out there and that you have access to it but number two that there is no because I'm not mentioning it I don't support I 100% support Black Lives Matter and that is what I'm gonna say on it like I said I'm gonna link down below all of the petitions and resources and like things like that and like the playlist that my honor things to completely promote Black Lives Matter with that said <laughs> Let's get into my most anticipated releases. I'm doing it by date. So for June, the first date is June 2nd. If I look down, it's because I have my computer here and I like categorized everything by date and author, all that. So that's why I'm looking down, if you see me looking down. So it's a song below water by Bethany C. Morrow. This is a black author with a black main character. So I just thought, I mean, number one, it comes first in the like date but also I figured we would start off talking about a black uh, author and a black main character. So this is interesting because it's actually about sirens which I love mermaids and sirens and things like that um so it's really interesting but it's also interesting because it's set in like the real world. So our main character is Tavia. Tell me in the comments if I'm saying that wrong. I think I'm saying it right but I have no idea. So she is a siren but she has to keep her siren Ness a secret um, from everybody around her um, and things like that. Um, she is living on land and she's going to like high school and like doing normal 
teenager things but when a murder trial siren murder trial goes is on national news and one of her favorite fashion icons reveals that she's also a siren it goes through their community and then Tavia accidentally lets her siren voice out and I'm assuming it's the aftermath of all of that. I love all of that. I'm really excited for it um, because I really like sirens and I don't think I've ever read a story about a black siren or like a black main character that's a siren so I'm really excited about that. I think it's gonna be really cool. Haven't gotten it yet because you know I'm broke but when I get money I will get that. Um, so the next book that I have that also releases on the second is The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. So this is pitched as Les Mis meets Six of Crows, which kind of is all that I needed to know. I've never read Les Mis, but I know it's revolving around the French Revolution and stuff like that. But I really do love Six of Crows. Um, like I love the whole heist and all the like gangs and like stuff like that. Essentially, we are in an alternate 1828 Paris, which is like an urban um, jungle. The French Revolution failed. And now the city is divided between nine undercrowned guilds and the merciless royalties who obviously stayed in power and everything because of the French Revolution. We follow this girl named Nina and her sister Cosette and Cosette ends up being taken by one of the guilds so Nina has to infiltrate to get her sister to safety and like they have to prevent a war between all the guilds. Anyway, this kind of has everything that like I love sister and like familial relationships, so I'm really interested to see to see the dynamic between the two sisters. I love the whole idea of like the the guilds, the French Revolution failing. Like I just think it's a setup for such a incredible book. Like it would could be really really good if done correctly. Um, so I am super excited to read that. I have like 17 books on this list, so this might be kind of a long video because I tend to ramble but we're gonna do it. So on the third, this uh, the book Divine Bloods by Beck Michaels comes out. So I'm gonna be completely honest. I didn't really want to read this when I read like the first part, but then it says, and this sold me, I don't really care what it's about, and this is what I'm gonna say about it, is along the way she, which is our main character, meets Cassio, a celestial prince with magic blood and wings as black as his heart. That's it. That's all I needed. It's really all I needed. I'm completely sold. They're going on some sort of journey. And that's all I really know. They, they meet, they're going on a journey. I'm assuming there's a romance and I love people with wings. So that's really all I'm going to say because come on. So next on the 9th of June, the Shadow Wand by Laurie Forrest came out. Now this is the third book in the Black Witch Chronicles by Laurie Forrest. I read Iron Flower in one of my vlogs. I had already read Black Witch. Now I'm not going to tell you the synopsis of The Shadow Wand because I feel like if you haven't read the rest of the series and that's just spoilers and we're not about that on this channel. It's actually really hard to explain. I'll explain the basis but just know it's so much more than this. So The Black Witch follows Ellerin Gardner who is a gardenarian and she is the descendant of the black witch her grandmother is the black witch and what the black witch did was years ago the gardenarians were all enslaved by all these um this other people called the celts um and i forget there's a whole bunch there's werewolves there's uh, Kelpies, which are like mermaid things, but they're like also seals, and then there's elves, and then there's snake, there's a whole bunch of different elves. There's werewolves, there's, oh my god, what else? There's druids, and there's fae, and there's just dragons, like, there's so many things in this world. She is the descendant of the Black Witch, um, and everybody says that she should be the next Black Witch. Basically what the Black Witch did was the Black Witch killed the last, the Icarol, and the Icarol are these um, people who have wings, but they are like dark beings. Um, and she ended up slaying the Icarol, which released all the Gardenarians. But years later, now the Gardenarians are kind of the people who are oppressing everybody else. 
Um, and it's kind of about her growing up in the very much mentality of the Gardnerians and what a Gardnerian should be. They're, they're like witches and like wizards and stuff because they have wands or whatever. Um, but growing up in that kind of environment and then going to the university which is a melting pot of all the different kinds of races and things like that um, that exist in this world and her kind of coming to terms with the fact that the way that her race views other people isn't necessarily right that people have the propensity to be bad and good but it's not because of their blood or it's not because of who they are it's just because of decisions that they make um, but I could go on and on about this book <laughs> in this series. I absolutely love it. Um, I think it does not get enough hype on book, on like booktube and things like that. Wait, I just, I absolutely love this series. I think that everybody should read it. It's really good. Granted, they're like 600 pages long, but it's super, super good. I, I'm gonna stop talking about it, but it's really good. So the next book came out on, actually no, it comes out on the 23rd. Well, when you're seeing this, it will have come out yesterday. When I'm filming this, it will have come out. It's coming out tomorrow. And that is Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee. So, first off, this cover. I'm a sucker for a Charlie Bow water cover. They're amazing. But I didn't really know a lot about this when I first, like, saw this. But all I really needed to know was that our main character, is all I read, was... What do you call it? I'm gonna go her name is Sersha. It's S-I-R, I'll put it down here, S-I-R-S-C-H-A, I'm gonna go Sersha. Um, Ashwin comes from nothing, but she's intent on becoming something. After years of training to become the queen's next royal spy, 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 her plans are derailed when shamans attack and kill her best friend, Sango. Now, I was sold by the fact that she's gonna be the queen's royal spy, but then I was even more sold, and this is kind of where I was like, that's it, I don't need to know anymore was when Sarsha somehow restores Sango. I'm gonna put his name here too. Actually, I'm not sure if it's a he or a she. They, I'm gonna put their name here. I don't know how to pronounce it. If you do, tell me in the comments below. And she ends up restoring his life. That's all I needed to know. I mean, the cover is beautiful, so that's kind of what drew me in at first. And then Spy and somehow Resurrection? Completely sold. Do you need to know anything more than that? You might, but I doubt. So we're gonna leave it at that. The next book also comes out on the 23rd and it is Seasons of the Storm by Ellie Casamino. Now this, to be honest, when I read the first line of this book, it was super weird. And like, I didn't really understand what like they meant, um, but I kept going and I absolutely think this is super such a cool concept so essentially our one of our main characters is named jack and jack um one night is faced with a choice to live forever according to the ancient laws of this magical land that he lives in or die most people obviously are going to say well i'll just live forever but what he doesn't realize is is that when he does that he becomes winter and basically the seasons are personified and each season has to kill the one who comes before him. So summer kills spring, autumn kills winter, winter kills autumn, and spring kills winter. Wait, what? Summer kills spring before, so it's autumn, winter, oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, so then spring kills winter. Then turn of events, plot twist, him, Jack, and Fleur, spring fall in love and now they got to figure out how they don't have to kill each other and that just seems amazing i absolutely love the seasons my favorite season is autumn but the idea that a season can be personified and like put into a person and then they have to kill each other just what the next one again also comes out on the 23rd. This next one is Hunted by the Sky by, and I am gonna have to read this like from the screen because I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Tanaza Bahathana? Tell me if I'm pronouncing that right or wrong. I have no idea. But anyway, I don't really know how to explain it just because I, I don't know. 
it from the tagline it says a riveting story of discovery forbidden romance and idealism against all odds set in a fantasy world inspired in part by indian history and myth for fans of saba to hear and tomi adiyemi yeah that's kind of you know so i'm just i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna read the synopsis that i have here because i feel like it it, it sums it up the best better than i could so it says, Gul has spent her life running. She has a star-shaped birthmark on her arm, and in the kingdom of Amber, Ambar, girls with such birthmarks have been disappearing for years. Gul's mark is what cursed her parents' murder, her parents' murderer at the hand of King Lohar's ruthless soldiers and forced her into hiding t to protect her own life. So when a group of Weba women called the Sisters of the Golden Lotus rescue her, take her in, and train her in warrior magic, Gul wants one thing, revenge. Don't we all? Kavas lives in the tenements, tenements <clears throat> and he's just about ready to sign his life over to the king's army. His father a terminally, is terminally ill, and Kavas will do anything to save him, but sparks fly when he meets a mysterious girl, Gull, in mm, the capital's bazaar, and as the chemistry between them undeniably grows, he becomes entangled in the mission of vengeance and discovers a magic he never expected to find. That whole thing just sounds really cool. Like, especially the gold part, like, honestly, I could care less about the cows, but the fact that she's taken in by warrior women, I mean, come on. That's all I'm gonna say on that one, too, because, like, do I need to say more? I don't think so. I'll be leaving the links down below to all of these books, so if you do need more, look down there. So now, these next books are releasing in July. The first book that we have is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. So I have been seeing this around quite a bit. Um, I saw this like months ago, like when I started um, booktube and I was on NetGalley and I was looking at arcs, one of the arcs on there was Cinderella is Dead and I didn't really understand what it was about other than that it was sort of a Cinderella retelling but I don't really I don't want to say that's true because it is and it isn't. So essentially this book takes place 200 years after Cinderella is alive and now um, instead of it being the people are invited to the ball, every um, eligible like woman or like teen is uh, required to go to the annual ball where the men of the kingdom select their new wives and if you're not chosen that girl's never heard from again so super cutthroat like interesting whatever but then we end up finding out so we have lgbtq representation in this and the funny thing was so i read that i was like oh that's super cool um our main character sophia she ends up going to the ball um but she doesn't want to go to the ball she would rather marry her best friend Aaron but she ends up she just tries to flee from the ball because she's scared that she, she doesn't want to marry anybody and she's scared that when some nobody picks her she's going to be taken or whatever whatever they do to these girls so she ends up finding Cinderella's mausoleum and she meets Constance who's the last known dog descendant of Cinderella and her steps essentially they vow to take down the king that was great, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. So I was scrolling down to read some of the reviews and one of them said it's a modern day Cinderella retelling LGBTQ as if the Cinderella and Merida got together. And I was like, I'm sold. That sounds amazing. This sounds like a really feminist story. And I'm all about that. Another black main character with a black by the way. The next one also comes out on the 7th, if I didn't say that it comes out on the 7th, is This Princess Will Save You by Sarah Henning. So this is another Charlie Bowater cover that I have been seeing everywhere. I've seen this book everywhere for months and it's pitched as a princess bride retelling. If Wesley didn't save Buttercup, if Buttercup saved Wesley. That's kind of all I needed to know, and that's all I need you to know, because if you like Princess Bride, read it. Hello. So, I think we all know what Princess Bride is about, and if you don't, correct that, go watch Princess Bride, mm -hmm. then come back, find the link in the description below, and get the book so you can read it. 
the next couple of books yes the next couple of books release on the 14th of July and the first one is The Storyteller's Daughter so this is pitched as a Rumpelstiltskin retelling which I wasn't too much of a fan of but as I continued reading the synopsis it seems to me anyway that Rumpelstiltskin is going to be the love interest so I'm really interested to see how that's gonna play out so we follow our our main character Cosette in a world so every child is born with a gift except Cosette was born giftless her father attempts to hide her misfortune because I guess they're kind of ostracized and she tries to bring her before the king where she he entraps her because she has no gift or whatever but then Cosette is searching for power so that she can free herself and she comes upon Rumpelstiltskin who is also trapped. The next book releases the 28th of July and it's called Ever Cursed by Cory Ann Haydu. And I have seen this book on, I don't know about booktube, but I saw it on bookstagram and the cover is just gorgeous. Um, but it ends up being about these sisters and they're all like admired and cherished and everything, but they're all cursed in a different way. They are each cursed to be without one essential thing. So one is sleep, eat, bleh. without the ability to eat, one can't sleep, one can't love, one can't remember, and one can't hope. Um, and their mother is imprisoned in like this frozy, frozen time capsule thingy. Um, and Eden, who is the last sister, when her 13th birthday comes, the princesses are all given the opportunity to break the spell, um, break the curse, um, and it's kind of that. I'm assuming it's a story about, like, sisterhood and all that, um, and kind of learning what you were taught isn't really what was, what is true. In order to break the spell, they have to confront the one who put it on them, but when they go and confront the witch, it says that she might not be the villain that they thought. So I just think it's really interesting. It's just, a, it's like a, it sounds like a twisted fairy tale, like re, not retelling because I don't think there's a fairy tale like that, but like it seems very fairy tale-esque. So I really like that in stories. Now August only has three books in it. Um, it doesn't seem like there's very many, you know, releases for August. But anyway, these are the three that I really loved. Like I am 100% getting all of these they sound amazing. So the first one is The Dark Tide by Alicia Jasniska. Jasniska? I'm gonna put the name here again. I'm really sorry. I'm horrible at pronouncing things. But this story just sounds so captivating. So it's basically in this world every year um, on this certain day a witch, the witch queen, lures one boy back to her palace and he's sacrificed um in order to keep this the island that this place that the setting is for the story from sinking the main character this year is convinced that her brother is going to be taken um in order to try and save him she enlists the help of someone who has been and come back and been and been saved but by doing that she ends up attracting the attention of the queen and the queen says that she's gonna take her brother but, but, Lena, our main character, does a Katniss Everdeen volunteers as tribute to save her brother. Right? Right? You follow? You following me? So now they have to await the full moon. Mm. And it says, but Lena is not all that, all what Eva, the queen, expected. And the queen is nothing like Lena envisioned. Against their will, they find themselves falling for each other as water floods. Caldella's streets and the dark tide demands its sacrifice they must choose who to save themselves each other or the island city relying on them both that sounds high stakes lgbtq ia plus representation like this just sounds and it's like a super dark fairy t like not fairy tale but like a super dark premise this sounds so good like so good so excited to read this the next one releases on the 11th of August, and it's The Star Daughter by Shweta Thakrar, I'm gonna say is how you say her name. 
the tagline or like one of the things is this gorgeously imagined YA debut blends shades of Neil Gaiman stardust and a breathtaking landscape of Hindu mythology into a radiant contemporary fantasy. I love stardust. It's amazing. Um, and anything that's kind of like like that, I love. So we end up following Shito. Please tell me how to pronounce that. I'll put the thing here. And she is the daughter of a mortal and a star. Um, and she lives on Earth, I believe, or whatever. She lives with her father. And when her human, her father is a human, she he ends up getting put into the hospital. Um, and she needs a star to help him save her. But to do that, she has to go to the celestial court. She has to take the stage as her family's champion in a competition to decide the next ruling house of the heavens and win, or she can't return to Earth. And that whole celestial, it just sounds amazing. Come on, like, sounds freaking amazing. So the last book that I'm going to talk about, and it comes out on the 25th of August, is Where Dreams Descend by Janiela Engels. Now this one, as soon as I saw the cover and people have kind of been describing it, it really reminds me of Carval. Carval is like a circus book and people have been saying it's like a mixture of Carval and the Night Circus and those are all circus or like performance, um, you know, group type of, type of books. And it just sounds really cool. Well, I'll just read you the, the thing because I think it kind of sums it up really well. It says, In a city covered in ice and ruin, a group of magi magicians face off in a daring game of magical feats to find the next headliner of the conquering circus, only to find themselves under the threat of an unseen danger striking behind the scenes. As each act becomes more and more risky and the number of missing magicians piles up, three are forced to reckon with their secrets before the darkness next comes for them next. The star, Kalia, a powerful showgirl, out to prove she's the best no matter the cost. The master, Jack, an enigmatic keeper of the club and more than one lie told. And the magician, DeMarco, the brooding judge with a dark past he can no longer hide. That just sounds amazing. <laughs> like, I love circus books. I think they're really cool. Like Now, when I say I like circus books, I don't like circus books that involve animals or mistreatment of animals or anything of the sort. However, I like circuses that have performances, like people performing, doing a craft, doing an art, or acting, or like stuff, stuff like that. I really enjoy that. I think it's a fascinating concept. Those are all of the, of my most anticipated summer releases. I know, like I said, it's late. This video is probably kind of long. I said it in the beginning of this video, I am planning to do videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays up until the end of August. I might continue to do that. However, on August 31st, my school starts up again, so it might be a lot of my plate to do that, but I will try my best, and I will see you next time. Tell me some anticipated releases that you have, and thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day. Bye!